In the late 1990s, Russia was going through monetary depression. The economy was imploding under the weight of free market reforms, social unrest was spreading, and people were nostalgic for the good old Soviet times. Yeltsin had been branded as the destroyer of prosperity and stability. He was at the end of his ropes. So, to turn the tides in his favor, he signed a treaty with Lukashenko whereby Belarus and Russia would integrate into a single state. Surely, annexing new territories would reinvent Yeltsin as the savior of Russia. Lukashenko, however, being the shrewd and ruthless politician he is, was playing by his own rules. And he set in motion the most ambitious coup in world history. This is the story when Belarus tried to take over Russia. I'm your host Chivan and welcome to Caspian Report. Today's episode is sponsored by Curiosity Stream, a streaming service that offers thousands of documentaries. I can't say enough good things about Curiosity Stream. Their library spans science, politics, history, technology, society. Personally, I enjoy non-fiction and some of my favorite documentaries include The Spying Game, The Real War of Thrones and Stalin Trotsky. These titles and many more have helped expand my base of knowledge. Curiosity Stream is available worldwide and on multiple platforms. You can get unlimited access starting at just $2.99 a month or $19.99 a year. That's a bargain. If you want to test things out, you can. There is a 30-day free trial available. Just go to curiositystream.com slash Caspian and use the promo code Caspian, all one word lowercase, during the sign-up process. When Boris Yeltsin became Russia's first elected president in June 1991, he immediately began implementing many revolutionary reforms to end the Soviet planned economy that was characterized by paternalism and public welfare. But things did not go as imagined. The new capitalist economy performed horribly through most of the 1990s. In fact, from 1991 to 1998, Russia lost about 40% of its GDP and suffered multiple sessions of inflation that decimated the savings of Russian citizens. Real income dropped while mortality jumped, so much so that Russians came to believe that they had made a catastrophic mistake by switching from communism to capitalism. As such, people became increasingly nostalgic for the Soviet times, and Boris Yeltsin became increasingly unpopular. By the late 1990s, Yeltsin had earned the reputation for being the man who destroyed the once glorious Soviet Union. Something had to change. So, to ease popular discontent, instigated by difficult living circumstances and score political points against the domestic opposition, the Kremlin needed to demonstrate success in relations with Russia's neighbors and revive the brotherly ties that once were. A plan was hatched that would reinvent Yeltsin's image from the destroyer of the Soviet Union to the savior of the new Russian Federation. The plan had to be bold and visible. It had to be easy to digest for the public. And nothing says strength as territorial expansion. At this time, neighboring Belarus was the only post-Soviet republic that wasn't skeptical about a Kremlin integration project. So it was selected as the experimental playground for Yeltsin's blueprint. Signed in 1999, the Union State Treaty between Belarus and Russia was a unique integration format that sought to gradually integrate the two into a single state. At first, the treaty would retain the sovereignty, territorial integrity and constitutions of both parties while encouraging coordination on economic and social policies and synchronization on defense and foreign policy. In the long term, the Union State Treaty envisioned a joint parliament, a joint executive office, a single currency, and even a constitutional act. Steps that would effectively set Belarus and Russia on a path towards outright unification. However, much of the treaty was based on parity. Legal mechanisms were conceived 
to ensure that no side could pass legislation unilaterally, meaning Moscow and Minsk were equals. Neither side could force the hand of the other. It was a virtuous gesture, but the condition of parity unknowingly set Belarus and Russia on a geopolitical collision course. In Belarus, the Union State Treaty was seen for what it was, an attempt by Russia to annex Belarus with the aim to strengthen Yeltsin's hold on power. Well, two could play that game. Lukashenko had always been a ruthless politician, but what he imagined was perhaps the most ambitious coup in world history. But to understand how Lukashenko and Yeltsin got to this point, we need to dial back to 1994. Back then, at the beginning of his rule, Lukashenko had been reasonably open to cooperation with the West. In December 1994, he signed the Budapest Memorandum and surrendered Belarus's Soviet legacy nuclear arsenal in exchange for security guarantees by the signatories, the United Kingdom, the United States and the Russian Federation. Later, in 1995, Lukashenko signed the Partnership Cooperation Agreement, which he considered as the first step towards eventually joining the European community. However, early on in his first term, Belarus was hit by hyperinflation. As the economic outlook plummeted, Lukashenko's approval rating fell sharply. The political opposition accused him and his allies of corruption and fraud. And Lukashenko consequently began to look to the Kremlin for financial and diplomatic support. Lawmakers in Minsk began talking of ditching the West for closer cooperation with Russia. This made complete sense at the time. The economy of Belarus was closely tied to Russia, especially regarding raw materials, crude oil and natural gas. And if the hyperinflation was to be brought under control, Belarus had to work something out with Russia. When the Union State Treaty came into life, it provided Lukashenko with a unique opportunity. Since the parity provision gave Belarus equal legal power to Russia, and since Yeltsin was nearing the end of his unglamorous political career, Lukashenko believed that he could use the treaty to replace Yeltsin and govern over the unified state. It sounds sketchy when you think about it now, but one of the provisions of the Union State Treaty was to create common citizenship in Russia and Belarus. This would have made it perfectly legal for Lukashenko to run for the top office in the unified state. And back in 1999, it seemed as if Lukashenko was the man with the best chance to restore the USSR. Both the public in Belarus and Russia deemed him as the person most capable of bringing stability back into the lives of ordinary citizens. But it wasn't just the public that believed in Lukashenko. There was a growing political elite in Russia that wanted change. Lukashenko became increasingly popular in the Russian Duma, and he gained crucial support from the Russian oligarchy, lobbyists, and regional leaders. What's more is that there was talk of a constitutional referendum, and it seemed like snap elections were about to be announced for the presidency of the Union State. These rumors were made all the more likely by the fact that Lukashenko was actively touring the Russian countryside, going from province to province, collecting pledges and support in the process. He was effectively going on an electoral campaign. By every measurable metric, Lukashenko seemed like he was about to succeed Yeltsin, and the signing of the Union State Treaty gave him the legal power to do so. Then. Yeltsin threw a curveball and handed the keys to the Kremlin to Vladimir Putin, an up-and-coming politician with ties to the Russian security apparatus. Nobody in the Russian elite thought much of Putin at the time, but he seemed docile enough to allow the oligarchy to remain in power. Either way, for Lukashenko, his ambitious coup had failed right under his nose. In the coming years, Putin would swiftly turn the tables against the oligarchy as he centralized the Russian state under his control. 
then, Putin changed his policy towards Belarus. No more Mr. Nice Guy. First, Moscow started insisting on being compensated for importing Russian natural gas and crude oil at low prices. Then, in 2002, Putin expressed that the only way the Union state could proceed was for the constituent regions of Belarus to merge into the Russian Federation following the German reunification model. This did not appease Lukashenko, but Putin wouldn't let go. In 2004, Russia insisted that a referendum be held on the integration of Belarusian territories as well as an election for the head of the Union state, which Putin would have likely won. Lukashenko's coup had turned into a rout. He objected the proposal and did his best to obstruct the process, and in this resistance, Lukashenko did succeed. Elsewise, Belarus wouldn't exist today. Throughout the two decades that followed, the topic of the Union state has continued to resurface on many occasions, but a consensus has thus far remained beyond reach. The legal mechanism of the parity ensures that no decision can pass unless both sides agree to it. It's hard to imagine that Moscow will ever give Minsk equal say in socio-political issues, Belarus for its part cannot agree to anything short of parity, as this would amount to a loss of sovereignty. So Belarus and Russia are stuck. It is impossible to overcome the legal mechanisms, so the two sides have opted to wage asymmetrical trade wars instead, with crude oil and natural gas being used as means of political blackmail. However, while the unofficial trade war has been ongoing, the idea of a union state has lost traction in the eyes of the people. In Russia, public nostalgia for the USSR was a manifestation of the economic crisis of the 1990s, while the youth in Belarus are now looking towards the West, not East. Still, the Union State Treaty presents a major geopolitical prize for the winner annexing territory without military invasion. That's why, irrespective of the will of the people, policymakers in Minsk and Moscow continue their political games. Even today, the question over the Union state is alive and well, mainly due to the crisis in Belarus. Lukashenko's supposed re-election, with 80% of the vote, has triggered large waves of protests across the country. The Kremlin is now leveraging Lukashenko's weakening position to coerce him into advancing the Union state. And for the first time since the inception of the treaty, it seems like Lukashenko is caving in to the demands of his Russian counterpart. I've been your host Shivan from Caspian Report. If you like what we do, please leave a like, comment and subscribe. Thank you for watching and Savol.